everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. We are going to have so much fun today doing the easiest edit you will ever make. So you will need to use Photoshop for this and then I'm going to walk you through all of the easy steps. You want to first select the right image to use this technique with. You want an image that has very little white in the actual subject. So for this image, it's going to give us a very unique look when we do the conversion. The reason I selected this one is again, there's very little white in the subject. Our background is actually mostly black or dark in the shadows, and our foreground is predominantly all green, and it doesn't have a lot of white in it. So that's the reason I selected the first image. Now, I also selected this image, and let me go to history. And this image is very different. It was shot on a white background. It was actually shot on a tracing pad, light tracing pad. So the background is all white. My flowers are predominantly colored. Now I have some shadowing of the flowers that I did creatively. That's in another video, but I did that and those are white as well. So as you can see, when we make the conversion, we're able to retain the detail in everything, and then we have the black background. So I'm going to walk you through the steps, but I wanted to give you some ideas on options when you are considering what type of image to use this technique with. First thing would be to look at your image. If your image and your subject is very white, then it's not going to work. Also, if your subject is very pale yellow, it's possibly not going to work. So you want to consider an image with either a dark background, a little bit of white in your subject, or a white background and um, a lot of great detail and color in your subject. So the reason that you want to think about the whites and blacks as you're in your image is when we do our conversion using LAB color, it is going to impact the lightness and the um, light areas in your image. All right, so the first step is your photo selection. I've got this image here and we're gonna work with this one today. Okay, the next step is you just bring your image in. You don't need to duplicate your background layer. You're just going to start fresh from your background layer. So the next thing you're going to do is go up to image mode and we are going to convert it to LAB or lab color. So. A little bit about this color space. This is a large color space. It's, um, it's think of it as a huge, huge bowl of colored gumballs. It's, it's humongous. Um, it would, you know, fill up your house. It's a very large color space. And so it has lots of variations of color in it. Those colors in LAB color cannot be rendered when we print or view digitally. So that's why we typically use a smaller color space like RGB. So it's a fun way to edit because it's gonna give you different tonal qualities and different looks, but then we need to keep our image back in RGB when we export it to print or show digitally. So you can read more about LAB color if you're interested in it. That's just a little quick, quick lesson. It's not all the nitty gritty, but just to give you some idea of what we're talking about. All right, so for this process to create this kind of magical image, we're going to again go to image mode and then LAB color. Some people say lab color, some people say LAB. Um, I was trained on LAB, so that's typically what I use. Okay, so once you've made that mode adjustment, we can see now we're in lab color. So what you wanna do is come over to your channels. This is where you're gonna see the difference. Now, if we were in the RGB mode, you would see red, green, and blue. Here, we're going to see that our image is in lab. We have the lightness channel and the AB channel. What we wanna do is we want to just click on the lightness channel. So we're gonna turn all the others off. You just click on lightness. You can see what it does to our image. And this is where the magic of LAB color comes in. It is focused on the light and the dark areas of our image. 
our second step is to come up to um, image adjustments and you want to go to invert. So again, that was image adjustments invert. So we're going to invert it and this is what it now looks like. Now at this stage, you, you don't really know a lot about how your final image is going to look, but it gives you a decent idea. At this point, you can click on the other color options. You can click on the rest of the channels. So now we've got them all visible. So I immediately know, wow, I really, really like how this image has turned out. It's giving it a very impressionistic painted look. It's kept all of my colors. Um, where it had some white, it has definitely made it darker, but I think it just enhanced. And then the dark areas, it's made them bright and white. So for me, this image worked. Sometimes you may do an image and you get to this step and it doesn't work. And you may decide to just scratch it and not use this color process. Now at this point, you could make additional adjustments. You could go to layers and you could work on your image. But what I encourage you to do, if you're happy with it, is go ahead and go back to image mode and take it back to RGB. Once you double check that, you're back in RGB color, you can go to your channels to double check. Now you can see you have the red, green, and blue channel, which is what we normally work with. At this point, I could come in and make fine adjustments to my image. So I could do any editing that I normally would do. And that's all there is to it. The biggest trick again is that image selection and then just following the steps. So let's look at a second one together. And then um, I'm going to turn you loose to go find an image and play with this technique. It is um, really fun to create. Okay, so this was another image that I used the technique with, but I'm going to walk you through it together. So I selected this one again. It was shot on all white and most of my flowers are colored. And so I'm assuming I'll get a pretty good result. So let's try it. We're going to go to image mode, change it to LAB or lab color. Once we're done, nothing really happens. So you have to go to your channels. There it is. We're going to just click on lightness. Now this lets me know pretty quickly that my flowers are going to stand out. They are showing as a shadow or dark. My background, of course, is white, but we are going to invert that. So now go to image mode and we, excuse me, image adjustments and invert. Image adjustments, invert. And there we go. So now if you wanted to save it as a black and white, you could. Um, but also if you want to go ahead and turn on your colors, you just click on the LAB up here and you've got all your colors and you've got your image. And I think this one turned out really beautiful. At this point, again, I recommend you go up to image mode and change it back to RGB so that you don't forget. And then you can again make any edits that you want to the image. All right, let's see. I had this image as well. So I will take you back to the open. So this is an interesting image because these are dogwoods and they have a lot of white in them, but I wanted to try it. So I went and did my um, LAB color and I did the inversion. And if I turn it off, I could see, I don't think it's going to let me in the history, but I could see that there was some good color difference. So then I converted it back to RGB and then I did some color modifications to the image, brightening the flowers. I think it's a really different and kind of um, painted look of the dogwoods and it's very interesting to have it on the all black surface. So that image worked pretty well. Um, the colors are muted and a different tone, which is sometimes what will happen. So for this image, I need to go ahead and go back to image mode and it is an RGB, so I am all good to go, and I can continue to make some edits to this image. So I'll put the steps on the screen, and I also have another video where I walk through this method, so I'll share this with you, but I think it's a fun way to do something different with your edits and to create something really beautiful in just a couple quick steps. 
So I hope you enjoyed this and um, go give it a try. Thanks so much.